Hello, we are live. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hatim. Hi, Sada. Hi, everybody. Hello, say hi in the chat. Say hi in the chat. Introduce yourself. All right. Hi, Sida. How are you doing? Good to see you here. Hi, Hatim. Great to see you. All right. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. Um, we're going to start in just a moment. I'm so happy to see all of you. And I just want to mention to the people who are watching this replay on YouTube, you have an incredible opportunity to come join us live in our very own community, Exploring Academy, which is at academy.exploring.co. And you get to participate in the live chat and I can answer your questions on the call, which is very exciting. So for everyone who is here now in our Exploring Academy community, you're able to get feedback, you're able to ask your questions, and I'm going to interact with you in the chat as well as through our webinar. Uh, so again, for those of you watching the replay on YouTube, we have the interactive live chat there, but it's if you want to participate live, then definitely come join our community. You can sign up for a free plan and join our free webinars. And if you want more, you know, materials, web courses, something to do every single day in our community, then definitely join one of our paid plans, which you would be super welcome to join and you'll get a lot of great content, a lot of opportunities to practice and so much, so much more. So you can find out more about that when you go to academy.exploring.co. All right. So now for those of you who are here live, again, I'm so happy that you're here. It's really wonderful that you're taking this opportunity to, you know, carve out some time in your day and be able to just focus on something that's important to you, which is English communication and language, right? So with that being said, I see, I see so many familiar faces in here. Hi, Mohammed. Hi, Adelis. Hi, Praveen. Hi, Sira. Hi, Hatim again. And it's great to have you. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen because we're going to talk about something that is very important in conversational English, in business English, and just being able to communicate effectively all around. So with that, I think we're ready. What do you think? Can I have some thumbs up in the chat? Give me some exciting emojis. Hatim gave a great emoji. Let's see your favorite emojis. I love emojis. They're so apropos, right? They can explain so much with just an image. Great. I love it. Thank you, Praveen. Thank you, Adelis. Thank you, Sada. Thank you, Hatim. Okay. So let me get my screen going for you all. And this is interactive. So I really do encourage you to make use of the chat, right? Engage with each other too. That's an amazing extra added bonus feature that we have here, right? The ability to chat with each other, ask your questions and start building rapport, right? Creating that familiarity. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So we're talking about how to express your opinions politely, right? Which in turn enables constructive dialogue, which is what we want. Okay, so this is about being able to speak your mind and being able to 
communicate constructively, right? You have opinions that you want to share. You want your voice to be heard. You don't want to shy away, right, from expressing yourself, but you want to do it in a nice, polite, kind, and respectful way, right? Because that's important. So hi, everyone. You probably know me from, well, the community, if you're in the community. <laughs> And also, I'm sure you came, you found us. How did you find us, by the way? Share in the chat. I'm really curious. How did you find Exploring Academy? Uh, was it through YouTube? Was it through Spotify? Where were you? Audible. Okay, cool. Where else? Where did you find us? I'm so curious always to hear. Okay, Spotify also. Very cool, Hatim. Thank you. Yeah, let me know in the chat. Where do you... Where have you come in from? Cool. Okay. So welcome to the webinar again. For those of you who don't know me, I'm just going to briefly introduce myself. I'm Mary Daphne. People call me MD for short. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Exploring and Advanced English, and I am head of community here at Exploring Academy. And I'm here because I really want to empower you with communication skills to present your most confident self, your most poised self, be able to help you communicate across any setting, cross-cultural setting, any casual, social, executive, business setting with confidence, com confidence and poise and comfort too. Um, and so we share confidence-boosting techniques tied into communication, social fluency, executive skills, and really everything that has to do with communication, because that is basically the most important thing in order to, you know, live life to its fullest, a lot of ways, right? It comes down to communicating well. Um, and for those of you, the, for those of you who like our podcast and our YouTube channel, it really does mean the world if you could share those with people who you think would enjoy and benefit from the high quality content that I share and yeah, just spread the word, spread the word and then have them come into the community because the more the merrier and it's a wonderful place to be. Okay. So I've got two masters. I've got an advanced masters from Columbia university, which you've probably heard of. It's in New York city. Um, and I've got another master's from Bacchagir University, and then I did my undergrad in French and communication. I was a double major, which I thought was, I, I, if I did it all over again, I would, I would do it again. Um, very happy about my choice there. Um, so yeah, so I've got over a decade in cross-cultural and corporate communications, television, live broadcasting, YouTubing. Um, I've been teaching and designing courses in communication, social skills, executive skills, public speaking, English, cross-cultural and business communication for 15 plus years. And I emphasize technology, empirical research, data-backed teaching methods for high-value student outcomes. And fun fact too, I also train teachers how to teach. So I teach teachers how to teach. And that's you know, a wonderful um, experience to have because it's 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 great to be able to help people who are trying to help others, right, in the world of education and teaching. So I did that abroad. I've done it at Columbia University, Baruch College, Hunter College, and other places in New York City as well. So just a little bit of background, so you know, um, you know. Who, who's who's here? Who, who, you know, who am I? <laughs> All right. So just some reminders. I really do want you to leverage the interactive chat. And a perk is being able to be in our community to join these live, which is amazing. I do want you to be respectful and kind, which, you know, everyone always is. But I always do want to remind people of that. And then I want you to feel free to ask questions during and I'll get to them, uh, especially if it's about what we're discussing. If not, just hold it off until the end. You can feel free to chat, like put it in the chat, but I might not get to it until the end so that it doesn't break the flow of, of what we're doing. All right, so our agenda, we're gonna talk about understanding opinions and politeness. We're gonna talk about the components of polite opinion expression, of which there are a few. We're gonna talk about strategies for expressing opinions politely. 
And then just a couple of scenarios and examples that you can kind of start to familiarize yourself with. And I will say this, we are going to be practicing these in a live video call in our Exploring Academy. So if you want to actually, you know, try out the strategies, get your hands dirty, so to speak, and really just practice, 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 and get feedback, that corrective feedback, a crucial component of any type of leveling up and learning experience, then I would encourage you to not only join this, but come to our live workshop next Monday, um, a week from today. So definitely do that because that way it will give you an opportunity to practice the strategies that we talk about today and then you get feedback on them and you get to interact with everyone else in our community joining that call too live. So unlike this, it's a live call where everyone is on video. So that's exciting. All right. So de the definition of opinion and politeness, speaking your mind and doing it in a polite way, a respectful way that does not um offend anybody right but you still are able to speak your mind it's it's important right otherwise it's going to be really difficult to make friends to build relationships and friendships to build your network to be able to go after the the basically go after the life you want right because life is not a solo journey we do that with people and if we if we're respectful we'll get there so much you know, go get there so much better, so much quicker, go further than we would if we were by ourselves and, you know, not respectful. So respectful communication is very important. It enhances the conversation dynamics. It enhances rapport. It allows us to have that, you know, um, good energy between us. And the more you engage well with people, the more people are going to you know, gravitate towards you and want to be your friend and want to work with you and want to launch a business with you. So it's extremely important. Um, and, you know, there are different ways of expressing opinions cross culturally. So it's important to kind of have our antenna up and realize that there might be different ways of doing that across cultures. So in this context, I'm going to give you a little bit of the sort of the American culture, American English culture and lingua culture in terms of how we sort of what is the social etiquette behind expressing ideas politely what does that mean how can we do that well um, but i do want you to keep in mind that cross-cultural aspect okay good so why does it matter i i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you if you have any ideas you can share that now with me in the chat share it with me and others in the chat why do you think expressing ideas politely matters so i'm gonna let you just chat some of your thoughts chat in the chat box some of your thoughts and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that just to kind of get the groundwork set to establish that so Sarah says to not, not to offend people. Absolutely. Yeah. In a nutshell, that's, that's it, right? It's important and crucial for maintaining healthy relationships, for building and creating rapport. You know, when you meet someone new or you're getting to know somebody, um, you know, being able to have productive discussions and conversations, right? Because when we're engaging with disrespectful people, or if we're being disrespectful ourselves without even knowing it, maybe that can lead to hurt feelings damaged relationships damaged reputations and it can even escalate to conflicts that might be difficult to resolve right and then we have to go into the whole um conflict management and mitigation so we've got some other great answers here hatim says to break the ice nicely absolutely adeli's to have a good conversation you're all saying incredible things yes that is that is why we need to be aware be cognizant of how we express ourselves right and we want to do this in a polite way as best we can okay good are we ready for the next slide so i want you to imagine a scenario like this let's imagine two co-workers are discussing something and they have two very different ideas and approaches on how to 
approach a project that they're working on. One coworker is going to respond in an aggressive way, right? Dismissing the other's idea as foolish or irrelevant. You know, oh, that's not a good idea. I can't believe you would even think of that. That's off topic or whatever, right? They're just being obnoxious and aggressive. This causes then the other person to feel really, you know, undervalued and disrespected, which is not good. And that can then lead to tension, right, between the two coworkers, which what happens? It'll make it difficult for them to be able to work together effectively. So maybe, you know, they don't do a great job on the project. Maybe they just can't work with each other. Maybe one of them quits or maybe one of them complains uh, or escalates it. So has this happened to you? Have you had a situation similar to this where you might have had two uh, may have had different ideas from someone else. And the way that somebody was explaining it or expressing their idea was disrespectful, was hurtful. If this has been a situation for you in the past or something similar, feel free to, you know, put an emoji in the chat uh, or even, you know, maybe share it in a sentence or two, what that could have been, what it was. But these are not fun situations to be in. They do happen, but our goal as confident communicators, as explorers, we want to do our best at communicating. And as we communicate really well, we set an example for others to communicate just as well, right? So it comes full circle. And this is not an uncommon scenario. So let's now get into what it means to express yourself in a polite way, right? When you have an opinion that you want to share, and it might be different from the main dominant voice in the room, which it can often be, right? How do you do this? Okay. So the first thing I would like to point your attention to is clarity, right? Being clear and concise. This is about, you know, enhanced understanding. When you're or when you're able to express yourself in a clear, concise way, you will accurately transmit your thoughts and ideas, which will reduce the risk of misunderstanding or misinterpretation. And thereby it will foster positive and productive conversations, right? We all want that. Enhanced understanding, that's incredibly important. It also brings us focused communication, right? Where we can be on point. We can get to the point. We can stay on point. We'll be less, you know, inclined to veer off track or get onto a tangent. And it allows people with this focused approach to contribute and, you know, avoid deviations and even conflicts. So this is why we do want clarity and to be concise. All right, so then we've got empathy, right? This is another component of this idea of polite opinion expressing. Okay, so we've got, ooh, am I being signed out? Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, well, just bear with me while I sign back in. But let's go over this slide real quick. So understanding others' perspectives, right? I understand dot, dot, dot. I see why you're advocating for it or expressing your opinion or your concern. So you explain something and then you say, you know, I'm, I'm worried uh, that X, Y, Z or a suggestion for a resolution. Do you think we can find a middle ground? Can we meet halfway? Do you remember that expression from last time? Um, so this is what we mean by, you know, and then explore tools that are user friendly and meet our needs, right? So this is what we mean by showing empathy. Why do you think empathy is important? I want to hear from you. So type your type your question or comment rather, your insight in the chat. In the chat. So tell me why do you think empathy is important? Okay. So we've got to respect others. Yes, absolutely. Respecting others is very important. To make people feel comfortable to share ideas and feelings. Yes, absolutely. What else do you think? 
what are some words you can use? What are some phrases you can use when you're showing empathy? What do you think? What do you think about that? Let's see. To make people feel comfortable and share ideas and feelings. We said that to respect others. Good. Sarah says empathy is a great uh, is great when it comes to communicating and keeping respectful conversation. For sure. So what are some what are some phrases do you think you could use? Like what is some language do you think that you can use when we're talking about empathy, right? empathetically sharing your, or empathically, you can say either, how would you share your opinion and show empathy at the same time? Could you please? That's good. That's good, right? Okay. I really appreciate your help. Yes, I appreciate your help, but I have a different idea on this. Or could you please, you know, Help me understand your way of thinking because I'm not quite getting that. Good. Anybody else? I see Adelis typing. What do you What do you think, Adelis? Yeah, this is this is definitely you know it's tough sometimes because what does empathy cause us to do? It causes us to put ourselves in the other person's shoes, right? So we don't offend them. We we show them that we're respecting them, but we also are very you know. We're, we're careful to make sure that we stand our ground, right? And that we stand up for our beliefs and our thoughts and our, um, you know, a position or opinion. So exactly, uh, Adele says to feel, you know, the way, um, you know, basically to put yourself in the other person's sho shoes, right? To feel the other person the same way that you might feel, right? Um, and then Sarah says, would you mind? Good. Good. So you're getting you're getting the idea here, which is very important. Um, we're gonna get some more um, practice. So let me go back to sharing my screen. So the idea, right, is to kind of see this enhanced communication and connection and conflict resolution, and that's what empathy can help us do, which is very important. Um, and you know it's something that we want to strive for okay what do we have next okay so now we get into the realm of respect so again these are components and i want you to start seeing how these are kind of fitting together right so the first one was clarity right and being concise so being succinct trying to get to the point as best you can so you don't have to go on and on and on and ramble rambling happens it's not the end of the world but we want to be more concise when we can right um and then we've got the whole thing about empathy right and now we're on to respect okay so respect this is something that you know i think a lot of people are aware of but maybe not so clear on how to do this right okay so inclusive dialogue using we language showing that you care about other people's ideas it's not just about you saying oh it's my way or the highway <laughs> right there's there's that expression in english my way or the highway where it's like i'm not gonna let anyone tell me Otherwise, it's going to be my way. But that's not a great, it's not conducive to rapport building, to respect, to being, you know, open um, and, and empathetic. So we definitely want to be aware of that. Um, this is a collaborative, you know, dialogue where thoughts are welcome. Then we've got constructive interaction, right? Really making sure that that respect ensures exchanging opinions even if you have a conflicting idea or an opinion like not everyone is agreeing on a subject but you still have that respect and preventing unnecessary discord right like conflict or escalation this is how respect can kind of keep the feelings at bay not not get things escalated which again can sometimes happen but we want to be aware of these Okay, now we've got tactfulness. So being tactful 
is about, you know, being essentially mindful, being deliberate about your words, right? Not just blurting out something, having a little bit of a filter in a way, like a respectful filter, um, choosing words and expressions that will resonate and have that emotional resonance, but not offend or hurt people, right? You're, you're, you're trying to maintain harmony and have a productive conversation. This is especially important in a work environment, right? Where you might not get along with your coworkers or, you know, some of the coworkers, but you have to work together, right? You have to work together because you're working on something that is bigger than you, right? Let's say you've got a project, you've got deadlines, you've got to meet those um, deadlines and you've got to work with somebody. So we've got an example here, which is, I acknowledge that everyone has diverse preferences and working styles. While I find our current approach a bit challenging, I'm open to learning more about its benefits and discussing any possible modifications to accommodate varying needs, ensuring a collaborative and fruitful working environment, right? So this might be, you know, you're, you're spearheading a project and you want to make, you want to level set on expectations and you want to make sure that everybody, you know, you're aware of different working styles. Um, and you're open to learning more about, you know, people's preferences. So that's really great. And then of course, active listening, right? And being able to give people a chance to speak. You don't want to be the conversation hog, right? You don't want to be that person who is just going to take up all of the bandwidth because that's just not a conversation, right? That's a monologue. It's a soliloquy. It's not a conversation. When you are listening and you have back and forth and you have people expressing their ideas, that's a conversation. And it's crucial for constructive dialogue, right? Fully demonstrating you're present, you are tuned in to what people are saying. If you're not sure about what people are saying, then you ask, you know, clarifying questions, follow up questions, things like that, where you maybe are even paraphrasing. You might give people some, you know, elaboration if you want, if you're on the other end of that. So this is important. So you might say something like, I value, I really value your opinion on this. Can you please share your thoughts? And I'll make sure to listen without interrupting until you finished. Sometimes it's good to say that, right? Like, I'm not going to interrupt you. I want you to feel free to speak your mind. Or let's say you're, you know, you're in a group setting and you notice somebody is like on the edge of their seat trying to say something. They want to get a word in edgewise but for whatever reason, they're not able to express themselves, but you notice that they really want you and you can see that in their body language, like they're leaning in, they're kind of like, you know, they have that feeling where they want to say something, maybe they open their mouth, right? We, we open our mouth before we speak. Uh, so it's like, you know, they open their mouth like that and then they want, they want to speak. Maybe you see that. Then you might say, Sally, I noticed that you have something to say. Would you like to share your thoughts? Now you have to be careful with this because unless you're really sure that they have something to say and that they've, they're trying to speak up for themselves, um, you don't want to put somebody on the spot and make them feel like I have to speak right now and I don't have anything to say. And I don't want to, you know, say anything right now because I'm not prepared, right? You don't want to put somebody on the spot unless uh, you know for sure that they have something that they want to say, like they're they're contributing. So this comes with more expertise, like the more of an expert communicator you are, the closer you're going to get to knowing when people want to talk. Um, but that's just a word of caution, like just do this if you are really sure that somebody does want to speak, but inviting them into the conversation. All right. So now how are we doing so far? I would love to see an emoji from you. That would be amazing. Give me your favorite emoji. Or maybe even a question if you'd like. Ask a question. Oh, I love it, Praveen, dancing lady. Yes, please. Amazing. Mm 
Nice. Amazing. Also water break for anybody who needs one. Okay. Caesar. Very cool. Hatim. Very cool. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So I think we're doing okay so far, right? We've got some ideas on how, you know, the components of what makes expressing our opinions effective. Okay. Now let's go to the specific strategies. Okay. Use of I statements. So when somebody, you know, when you want to express your feelings and you don't want to point fingers, you don't want to say you did this, you did that, you're blaming somebody, right? We don't want to do that. Instead, we want to use I statements. I feel this way. I think that I was under the impression that, right? Using these kinds of statements is so much better because it doesn't point fingers at the person, right? Um, and it doesn't make, it doesn't also, it, it makes you feel more calm too because you're you're talking about how you feel. You're not concerned about how others made you feel. You're talking about how you felt in that situation, right? So a non-I statement would be, you always interrupt me during meetings. You don't respect what I have to say. That's very like blame, blamey, right? Pointing the finger, wagging the finger at somebody. You do this, you do that. We don't want that. Why? Because it's not respectful and that's going to escalate. And we don't want that because then it's going to turn into a conflict, right? The whole point of doing this kind of expressing your ideas and opinions politely is so that there is, it's non-confrontational. It's non-violent communication. It is calm, composed, calm, composed, poised, and confident. So this would be an I statement, right? I feel frustrated and unheard when I'm interrupted during meetings. I believe our discussions could be more productive if everyone has an opportunity to speak without interruption. Could we work together to improve our communication? Right. So that's nice, right? That's much better. So key points in this, right? We've got the I statement that focuses on the speaker's feelings and thoughts instead of blaming or criticizing the other person. And it encourages open dialogue. And then it also seeks a cooperative solution to an issue. You notice this call to action here, right? Could we work together to improve our communication, right? And I've got 100% and a thumbs up from Sada. I love it. Thanks, Sada. I'm glad it resonates. Okay, open-ended questions. So this is when you want to invite the other person to share more about what they think, what they believe, their thoughts, which can foster understanding, understanding, cooperation, and meaningful conversation. So the, you know, it goes on. The 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 conversation goes on. It just it doesn't get stuck. And it just keeps, you know, ebbing and flowing, which is good. We want that. Can you help me understand your perspective on this issue and how you arrived at your conclusion? Right. So that's so much better than do you do you not do you understand? Do you get it? That's a yes, no question. We want to do the opposite. We want to ask an open ended question that fosters more discussion and dialogue which is good, especially when you're trying to, you know, share opinions and understand somebody's point of view and perspective, right? Good. Okay. I'd like to know more about your experiences and thoughts on this topic, right? So you're saying what your motivation is. Could you elaborate on the reasons behind your viewpoint? Okay. So don't be fooled by the way this is structured, right? Could you? Yes, no. It's more so, could you elaborate? Someone's not going to say, no, I can't elaborate. <laughs> that invites conversation still, right? And you're setting it up with, I want to know more. Tell me more. I'm curious. So again, semantics. Don't get caught up in the yes, no. It's more so what kind of response will it engender? What will it include? What will it encourage? Okay. So what about with this seeking clarification and reflective listening? 
So when you're seeking clarification, right, somebody expresses something and maybe you disagree with what they said, but you're trying really hard to understand them and to kind of get their perspective without judging them, then you might say something like, you, you know, you want to clarify. So could you please elaborate a bit more on your point about blah, 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 blah. I want to make sure I fully understand your perspective, right? So this is great. This is a wonderful, uh, this is wonderful phraseology because it shows that you're not jumping to conclusions, right? They might have said something really outlandish, um, but instead of jumping to conclusions, you say, okay, in your mind, you think, all right, let me, ask them to clarify. <laughs> Let me see if they can express themselves a little bit better. I want to make sure I really understand your perspective, right? Again, I language, right? Not, not, I, I, you, you didn't explain that clearly. You weren't, you weren't thorough with your response. No, it's not that it's, I want to make sure I fully understand your perspective. I want to understand better. And then reflective listening would be, so if I'm understanding correctly, you feel, and then you repeat what the other person said, but in your own words, because, and then reasons the other person provided, right? You want to make sure. So you're not, again, jumping to conclusions or, um, you know, you give them the benefit of the doubt and you give the person an opportunity to clarify, right? And then you say, is that accurate? Okay, good. Disagreeing agreeably, right? So disagreeing, but in a nice way. It's a lot harder than you might think, right? How many people have been in a situation where you've disagreed with somebody or they've disagreed with you and it was not done politely? How did it make you feel? How did it make you feel? What do you think? Yeah, Caesar says uncomfortable for sure. 100%, 100%. Yeah, it's not when we have differing opinions, right? There's nothing wrong with having a different opinion. In fact, it's an important thing because it prevents groupthink. Um, but we need to make sure that we feel comfortable disagreeing. And we also want to make sure that when we when other when we disagree with other people, we're providing a safe space for them to do that. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And then on the flip side, does anybody have a situation or have experienced a situation where, you know, somebody disagreed with you, but in a polite way? And how did that make you feel? That's the opposite, right? Have you encountered this before? That's my question. Where you disagreed, but it was met with politeness and you know, you were able to express yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sada, I think for you answered the other question, feeling not worthy. Absolutely. Right. When we are, our opinions are met or differing opinions are met with, you know, lack of respect or disagreeable feelings, it doesn't make us feel good. It makes us feel uncomfortable and not worthy, which of course are not nice feelings whatsoever. So let's talk about you know, how to disagree agreeably. So this might be something like this, right? I see where you're coming from. That's really good phrasing. I see where you're coming from, meaning I get your perspective. I see where you're coming from and I respect your viewpoint. However, so, right, you, you start with that. I see where you're coming from. I respect you. However, my perspective is a bit different. I believe that. And then you insert your differing opinion mainly because and then say why right that's very important you want to back up your claims you don't want to just make an assumption or make a claim without backing it up what's your evidence you've got to add your evidence so this is what we mean by insert your reasoning right insert your logic 
can we explore these differing viewpoints to find a common ground? How much better is that, right? This is a nice way of disagreeing. You don't feel any lack of respect. You don't feel like somebody's not worthy. You don't feel uncomfortable. These are nice ways of saying it. Let's look at another way. I understand and appreciate your insights on this. They've given me something to think about, right? Again, so you open it up with something positive. From my experience or from my perspective, I tend to see it more like this, and you insert that differing opinion, right? What you disagree with them on. How can we reconcile these differences and work toward a mutual understanding or solution, right? So you're asking, how can we find a solution? How can we reconcile our differences? All right, now with feedback, right? We're talking about both giving and receiving feedback constructively. And this is, again, being able to express your opinions politely. So with giving feedback, I've noticed, and then you say the specific behavior or outcome, and I think, and then give the observation or give the suggestion, could help improve it. I wanted to share this with you because blah, 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 blah. Like, I think it could enhance your productivity. I think it could help, you know, um, streamline your workflow, make it easier for you, enhance your team communications, whatever. What are your thoughts on this, right? So you're inviting them to speak as well. You're in giving them an opportunity to respond. Okay. Then we've got receiving feedback. So when somebody, you know, gives you some constructive criticism, hopefully it's constructive. So you would th first thank them, right? Thanks for sharing your observations and suggestions with me. I value your input. Can we discuss a bit more about blah, 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 so that I can understand your perspective better and see how I might incorporate your suggestions, right? So this is this is a very important part. It shows that you're proactive and that you're willing to take that feedback and turn it into something constructive, right? You're going to apply it. You're going to implement it. You're going to put it to work. You're going to make the positive changes. That's great because that's that's showing that you're proactive and it's a call to action too. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples here. And again, like I said, we're going to practice more examples and then actually uh, get some feedback, live feedback in the community call. So if you want to practice expressing ideas politely, then I would really encourage you to come to our community call um, next week. Okay, good. So to practice clear and concise statements. So let's imagine that there's a team meeting to discuss the project's progress of a project, and you have a differing opinion on the project approach suggested by a colleague. So you, you disagree with them, right? Which phrase is clearer? Because we're talking about concise statements. So is it this one? I really don't want to offend anyone, but I've been thinking, and you know, it just seems to me that maybe we could have thought this through a little bit more. There might be some other approaches, possibly more efficient ones, that we haven't really explored yet. I know everyone's been working hard, and I don't want to invalidate anyone's effort, but, I, but could we maybe consider looking at this from a different perspective? Okay, so that versus, I appreciate the hard work everyone has put into developing this approach. However, I believe we might benefit from exploring additional strategies that could potentially be more efficient. Would everyone be open to discussing alternative solutions? So is it A or B? Which one is more clear and concise? A or B? I see some people writing in the chat. Thank you, Hatim. Thank you, Praveen. Thank you, Caesar. Thank you, Sarah. All right, are you ready to see the answer? B, right? We've got acknowledgement and appreciation, recognizing the team member's effort, stating opinion clearly, directly expressing the thought or suggestion, and then an open-ended question, right? Inviting others to share their opinions and their thoughts, which is very important to show that you respect diverse perspectives. You don't want everyone to just agree with you. You want to challenge people and have them challenge you. Good. Nice. Nice job. Okay. 
Let's see this one now. How do we practice valuing different opinions, right? In a respectful way. So let's give the context where during a meeting, your team's discussing potential marketing strategies and one colleague suggests a traditional approach focusing primarily on print media. So magazines, newspapers, brochures, flyers, things like that. While you believe a digital approach would be more beneficial, advertising on socials and, you know, other places, digital medium. Which phrase is more respectful? Okay, so this one. I value your perspective on the importance of traditional marketing methods and the proven strategies they've had in the past. My view is that leveraging digital marketing strategies could potentially expand our reach and engagement. Could we explore a balanced strategy that incorporates both traditional and digital media to optimize our results? Okay, that's one choice. And here's our other choice. Traditional marketing methods are outdated and ineffective. I don't see why anyone would waste their time on them when digital marketing has far more reach and engagement. We just need to move with the times and focus on what actually works instead of clinging to obsolete strategies. You might have heard it in my voice, my tone of voice. I was trying to, you know, I mean, I did it in the natural way, but I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't just be, you know, given away to you. I want you to think about it. What's more respectful? And of course, tone is a giveaway, right? Absolutely. Tone is a giveaway. Okay. Ready to see the answer? What do we think? Sardal, what do you think? Is it A or B? Ready for the answer? Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. It is A. Good job. So we've got acknowledgement and validation. Validation is very important, right? Valuing the other person's opinion. We've got expressing a differing opinion, clearly and respectfully presenting your own perspective, but you're not demeaning the other person's viewpoint. We're not saying, oh, you have a horrible idea or your methods are outdated or you're just, you know, uh, not with the times. We're not saying that. And then we're con seeking constructive dialogue, right? Proposing more discussion, compromise, trying to meet halfway maybe and, and see where that can take you. Well done. Good job. Okay, so let's recap. So what did we do? We went through understanding opinions and politeness, right? Exploring the importance of being polite and respectful while expressing your opinions because you want to be able to speak up for yourself, stand up for your thoughts and ideas, but also do it in a way that's respectful to you and to other people. And also realizing that there might be some cultural differences uh, involved. And then we looked at the components right? What makes up, what comprises polite opinion expression. We talked about clarity, empathy, respect, tactfulness, and the importance of active listening in conversations. Always very important. Again, we can't have communication without listening, right? It's a two-way street. If it's just talk, talk, talk all the time, there's, that's not communication. Okay. So we also looked at strategies for polite expression. We talked about using and thinking about how to reframe something into an I statement, asking open-ended questions, looking for clarification, how to disagree agreeably, and giving and receiving constructive feedback. And we looked at some practical scenarios, right? How to express opinions politely and respectfully in certain contexts. Great, so I really do want you to practice these Think about how you can, you know, express yourself, express your opinion in a way that is honoring your, you know, true, authentic expression, but also doing it in a way that's going to respect people. And if you want to join us for our call, that'd be so great. We have a lot of fun in these nice small groups, and I invite you to participate in our workshop. 
It's a live video call. You'll connect with others, establish conversation partners, get immediate corrective feedback, risk-free practice. We have a lot of fun. You don't have to worry about making mistakes. You take risks because you can do that here in our community, right? It's, it's, it's a way for you to level up your communication in a risk-free way. You don't have to worry about, you know, um, a miscommunication or your boss or, you know, saying the wrong thing or costing yourself the interview or mi a misstep or right. The, in these high uh, stress and high stakes environments, those can actually lead to a big deal, right? It could be a big deal. But in our community, we're practicing so that when you get to those big moments, you don't have to stress about them. You're prepared for those moments and you get to practice that here with us and our members are absolutely lovely we have so much fun so if any of the following interests you then you might be a good candidate for one of our paying plans skill enhancement networking confidence building enjoyable exchanges with people from all over the world risk-free practice in a judgment-free zone. If you said yes to any of these, then you might want to join our fun group coaching experience. Okay, so the next um, practice session for this specific topic will be on Monday, October 2nd. And once you come into the community, all you have to do is RSVP for this lovely workshop. And then you can, you know, you'll get the um, the meeting link and you get to sign on at the time. It will convert it to the time zone you're in. So because we're all over the world, everybody. So we want to make sure that we all come on at that time and you'll know how to do that because it will convert to your own time zone. So you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to calculate, oh, what time is it in New York? What time is it in Paris? What time is it in, um, you know, wherever? So. Okay, so I'd love for you to join that again. Again, it's a wonderful opportunity, really fabulous communication, connection, community with everyone here. So exciting. So you can either um, access it through uh, when you buy one of these plans, and you can decide what you know works for you, and you get a one week free trial. So that's a huge plus and you can try it free like i said um if you're already in the community then all you have to do is go into your navigation toolbar right and go onto one of these spaces um, it will be hosted in the daily practice space so you just click on that and it will prompt you to sign up to upgrade so you can upgrade to the exploring academy plan or the executive communication lab plan and if you are coming from outside the community, meaning you don't have a free webinar, um, free membership yet, then you can just go to the website academy.exploring.co and you will be met with two plans here. And you can choose Exploring Academy Plan or Executive Communication Lab Plan. Right, like I said, academy.exploring.co. Perfect. And let's hear what people have to say in our community. So Medea says, best investment, you won't regret it. It's great because there's something to do here every single day. You can work on all of your skills and your communication. So reading, writing, listening, speaking, communication, social skills, and you get that feedback. You get a group of individuals that are, uh, you know, here to learn and grow. And they're on a very similar journey as you. Everybody might have a slightly different goal, but the goal, the one of the main goals is being able to communicate effectively and courageously and confidently. Sira says, throughout most of my life, I've battled social anxiety. Joining the Exploring Academy has empowered me to overcome my fears and shut down my BS. Each baby step in this supportive environment has been transformative, boosting my confidence in both personal and professional interactions. So well said, Sira. Thank you. I'm so glad you feel that way. And then Helger says, I had to give a presentation at work and I used the tips I learned from the community and everyone loved it. 
this community is different because it's not just about learning English, but it also focuses on practical communication skills and real life situations. And by the way, the, the skills that I'm teaching you it for communication will not only improve your English and you know help you in your professional life and personal life, but it also you can they translate into your L1, right? Meaning they are tools that you can use, communication tools and strategies you can use to become a better communicator, even in your first language. Marva says, Exploring Academy is different from any training that she's attended so far. Talking in small groups and everyone in the group participating in the conversation increases my self-confidence and speaking English in different social situations. And she feels like she, everyone's encouraged to speak in workshops and discussion sessions and that everyone's taken care of. That's great. And then we've got Edwin. The style of interaction and exploring is cutting edge incorporating innovative elements of teaching a second language. My speaking skills have improved in my daily interactions and I have surpassed some of the typical language barriers of learning a new language. Every day in live discussions, I learn new words, expressions, and discussion items, which I use afterwards in real life settings. So that's the thing. These are relevant real strategies that you will use right afterwards in the out there in the real world, right? When you need them. And the point is we practice them and you get to be familiar with them. Your confidence goes up. You feel good about it. You feel good about your communication and you can use them in the real world. And once you start familiarizing yourself with them, they'll just start to become second nature. You don't have to think too much about it. It just becomes, you know, like, like native speakers might do. Right. Or, but again, this is more than just, we have native speakers in our community too, who are here to perfect their communication skills. Because again, this is a communication community, a communication community. Raquel, I don't get to use English in my daily life. So I find it very enriching to have the opportunity to exchange with people from different countries and to learn about their customs and opinions on current affairs. Being in small groups allows us to be active in discussions and lose our fear of public speaking. And MD is always there to push us and help us if we hesitate or don't know a word or expression. Exactly. Saval says that she is she loves the community. And with this community, she has the opportunity to improve her communication skills as well as her language skills. And she likes that corrective feedback. And then Ishika, Ishika is one of our native English speakers. And she says her goal is to become more socially savvy, right? Reach that social fluency in the effective communication skills and build social emotional intelligence with people. MD is an excellent teacher and communicator. Her skills surely rub off on you. She eases you into better habits and makes everyone feel comfortable as the instructor and facilitator. I'm already experiencing subtle shifts by learning from everyone and MD. The community's international diversity is the perfect practice ground to interact in multicultural settings. I feel comfortable to say things without thinking too much as long as I put it across with integrity and grace something that Exploring Academy integrates in its modules. Wonderful. So that is just some of the, those are some of the things that our members are saying. Um, I wanted to give you a little sense of sort of what people are saying, what they think about our community, which is really lovely, lovely things. And on that note, thank you for spending this hour with me. I hope that you enjoyed it. I enjoyed interacting with all of you. And I hope to see some of you in our community, in one of our paid plans so that you can interact with us more. There's something to do every single day. And I posted the calendar so you get to see, you know, the suggested events to join, the live calls to join, some of the, um, the quizzes and quests and, and things that you can do every single day. And that's just some of the things. Those are just some of the suggestions. There's also a lot that you can just poke around with our web courses, our quests, our quizzes, uh, articles, webinars, workshops, live calls, interacting with your speaking partner and things like that. So thank you so much, everyone. I'm so glad that you were here. I'm so glad that you took this time to invest in yourself into your communication and your future self will thank you. So amazing work. You've all been so great. Thank you for interacting and I hope to see you in our community and feel free to engage, you know, with, um, with the community in some way, 
even if you're in the free webinar plan, you know, you can you can share your opinions about what you loved about this webinar and maybe even some suggestions for future webinars that you would love to have here. All right. So with that, I'm going to say good morning, good day, good evening, good night to everyone joining. All right. Bye, everybody.